Welcome to this video of solving second order ordinary differential equation using Scilab. In this video, we will consider cantilever beam problem which is governed by second order ordinary differential equation. And this problem is basically an initial value problem. The objectives uh, for this uh, video or for this discussion is uh, as follows. To understand how to solve ordinary differential equation in Scilab, here first we will see the first order ordinary differential equations. Then to solve second order ordinary differential equation in Scilab, this is the main focus of this uh, video lecture. Third objective is to prepare for solution of boundary value problems. In engineering, boundary value problems are basically very important problems. Uh, many engineering problems are governed by boundary value problems. Uh, here, we will not cover the boundary value problems in this video lecture, but whatever discussions uh, we will do here, whatever uh, things we will see in this video, it will form a solid background uh, for the required knowledge or for the required skills uh, that are uh, required for solution of boundary value problems. Let us consider an example of cantilever beam which is loaded with UDL over its entire span. Uh, the given data is as follows. The beam is loaded over the entire span with a UDL of intensity 0.4 newtons per mm. The length of beam is 1200 mm. The value of Young's modulus is 210 gigapascals. And the cross section of beam is rectangular. Here you can see the neutral axis and uh, dimension of cross section. This is basically an initial value problem and uh, you can easily see the analytical solution is given by delta max which is nothing but the maximum deflection of cantilever beam which occurs at its free end is given by w l raised to power 4 upon 8 ei since udl is acting vertically downward direction therefore there is a minus sign uh, so if we substitute the given values of w l uh, Young's modulus and I, uh, we can see that the magnitude of deflection at uh, free end is 8.77 mm. Here the origin is uh, at fixed end and uh, the governing uh, differential equation is like m is equal to EI into d2y by dx square which is very well known equation about the beams and you are already aware about this equation. The boundary conditions are at x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. This is a displacement boundary condition. And at x is equal to 0, dy by dx, that is, a, that is the slope uh, is again 0 at x is equal to 0. Now we have seen the governing differential equation m is equal to ei into d2y by dx square, where y is the deflection of beam x is the position and n stands for bending moment at any given cross section. Now this is a second order ordinary differential equation m is equal to ei into d2i by dx square. Here we will convert this second order differential equation into first order differential equations. There will be two first order differential equations. And why this is necessary that we will see uh, ahead. But for now, uh, let us convert this second order differential equation into two first order differential equations. For that, let us consider y is equal to u1, dy by dx is equal to du1 by dx, which is equal to u2, and d2y by dx square is equal to du2 by dx. Now again consider 
dy by dx is equal to du1 by dx is equal to u2 or to be very specific du1 by dx is equal to u2 and d2y by dx square is equal to f of x u1 u2 uh, f of x u1 u2 means f of x y and dy by dx so we are uh, basically rewriting our differential equation in uh, like this d2y by dx square is equal to f of x u1 u2 since u1 is y and u2 is uh, dy by dx so simply we are writing we are rewriting our differential equation like this d2y by dx square is equal to f of x y and dy by dx the same equations that we have seen uh, are expressed here in terms of matrix equation uh, or these two matrices uh, on the left hand side and on the right hand side are nothing but column vectors so if you see here the left hand side matrix or left hand side column vector is du1 by dx du2 by dx and on the right hand side uh, the column vector is u2 f of x u1 u2 which implies that uh, we can rewrite uh, these equations this matrix equation like dv by dx is equal to f of x v where v is a vector a column vector containing two variables u1 and u2 therefore dv by dx is simply d by dx of this uh, column vector u1 u2 so if you uh, carefully look, look here uh, we are uh, rewriting our differential equation like dv by dx is equal to f of x v and uh, this is very similar to first order ordinary differential equation that we usually uh, write Till now we have seen uh, how to mathematically express second order ordinary differential equation into two first order ordinary differential equations here onwards we will focus our attention in how to write these differential equations in scilab because our uh, main objective is to use scilab to solve second order ordinary differential equation now uh, you can see here this expression dv dx of 1 is equal to v of 2 and dv dx of 2 is equal to uh, this governing differential equation of them that we have seen earlier now uh, before proceeding further let us make clear why i have written this uh, like this dv dx of 1 and dv dx of 2 what does this dv dx stands for basically this dv dx stands for a variable which will be defined in scilab this variable contains a column vector containing two rows and it is very analogous to this uh, dv by dx which is expressed here and this dv by dx is nothing but uh, this vector containing two rows and one single column so first element of this vector is nothing but u2 what is u2 it is the second element of this vector v that's why we have written here v of 2 and uh, what is the second element of this vector uh, dv by dx it is du2 by dx which is nothing but this function and this function is not nothing but our differential equation so dv dx of 2 is nothing but uh, this expression so if you look carefully the, there is an analogy between how we define uh, this or how we express this differential equation in scilab and uh, what we have done in earlier mathematical treatment to solve the ordinary differential equation uh, initial value problems to be very specific uh, we will use uh, the function ode this is a uh, standard function which is available with the scilab and uh, this y stands for output uh, generated by this ode function and these are nothing but the input input arguments which are needed 
to be passed to this ODE function. So here the general way of calling this function is y is equal to ODE and the arguments for this function are y0, x0, x, f. The sequence has to uh, be remain same uh, while calling this function. So what is y? y is dependent variable. What is x? Which is uh, independent variable. Uh, x0 is initial value of x. y0 is initial value of y. And uh, f is the way we have defined the differential equation. So simply saying this is nothing but the differential equation. The call to the ODE function that we have seen just now uh, requires that your differential equation is to be first order differential equation, first order ordinary differential equation and it should be an initial value problem. Now our differential equation is a second order ordinary differential equation and uh, we have also seen that how to convert this ordinary differential equation of second order into two first order ordinary differential equations. Now that mathematical treatment and the general syntax and whatever uh, method we have used for uh, rewriting the equation that is already we have seen. Now we will focus on how to implement uh, whatever we have discussed earlier into a Scilab program. Here is a complete Scilab program uh, which is uh, used to solve the uh, cantilever beam problem and uh, we will go line by line. So first line is you can see there is a clear uh, statement which basically clears all the initially stored variable uh, from the Scilab. Uh, then second line is CLC which clears the console. CLF uh, which will clear the graphical window because since we are also uh, uh, formulated this program in such a way that a graphical output of result will be produced. So if graphical window contains already any image uh, it will be erased. Now uh, this line here you can uh, expect the user will enter the intensity of UDL and it will be stored in the variable w. On the next line user will enter the value of mi of cross section and it will be stored in the variable i. Similarly the Young's modulus will be stored in variable e and uh, length of beam which is also an input uh, for solving the problem it will be stored in a variable l so this input whenever you the program will encounter the word input it will wait for the user to input the data here we have converted our young's modulus uh, which was entered in gigapascal into newton per mm square and uh, the product of ei is stored in the variable j uh, this is important. Uh, this variable interval is equal to L by parts. Now suppose uh, analysis, uh, we want to divide the beam into 10 parts. So total length of beam is 1200 mm. So divided by 10. So each interval we will be of 120 mm long. Now whatever we have seen till now it is expressed here dv dx is equal to f of xv here we have defined the function in scilab this is the general way of defining uh, any function in scilab where dv dx is the output variable and uh, f is the function and x and v are the input arguments to this function also we have seen these uh, statements dv dx of 1 is equal to v of 2 and dvdx of 2 is this is nothing but our general expression for the beam uh, which is uh, given as 1 upon ei into wl square by 2 minus wlx plus wx square by 2. So in scilab we have uh, written like this. Here x will contain uh, x is a vector row vector uh, which will contain different values of x 
uh, from 0 to 1200 and the differences between two values is equal to the interval means first value of x will be 0 then next value will be 120 mm next value will be 240 mm and so on since this is an initial value problem the boundary conditions are specified at x is equal to 0 and similarly uh, the values of y uh, or to be very specific uh, the values of y and dy by dx are again specified at x is equal to 0 so this y0 is a uh, column vector containing two rows uh, y0 uh, is equal to 0 semicolon 0 means first row is 0 means value of y at x is equal to 0 is 0 and in second row that is the value of dy by dx at x is equal to 0 again that is 0 so y is a, is a column vector containing two rows 0 and 0 so first uh, 0 in first row stands for value of y at x is equal to 0 and 0 in second row stands for value of dy by dx at x is equal to 0. Now here is a call to very important function that we have seen earlier y is equal to ODE in bracket RK uh, y0 x0 x and f this RK stands for Runge Gupta uh, numerical method uh, you can use another differential uh, another uh, numerical method for solution of differential equation uh, it is not needed that every time you should call RK method, uh, but for the for this example, we have chosen RK, Runge Gupta method. That's why uh, this RK uh, appears there in ODE function. And all the lines below uh, are used to produce the output. So plots in the function plot is used to plot the values of x and y. Uh, then uh, display this uh, this line DISP function is used here uh, that will uh, display x and y value on the console and uh, last two line uh, the function n printed uh, it will print the uh, magnitude of deflection at free end means at x is equal to L the input to the scilab program uh, it is shown here uh, the values of udl intensity mi cross section young's modulus uh, length and uh, number of parts into which we have to divide the beam for analysis is passed into the scilab program upon the execution of this scilab program uh, the output is produced in console and it is shown here uh, you can see here uh, the corresponding values of x and y so at x is equal to 0 means at fixed end the value of deflection y is again 0 and at x is equal to 1200 means at free end the value of y is 8.777 and uh, like this uh, again you can see that uh, the console gives a message the maximum deflection occurs at free end uh, that is true for cantilever and its magnitude is given by 8.78 mm here you can see the graphical output uh, position versus displacement and this curve is self explanatory for any doubt or for any queries you can drop an email to me my email id is shown at the beginning of this video also you can comment if you need to solve any other kind of differential equation using scilab so that uh, i can prepare a video uh, explaining the same thank you for watching